Hey kids, nice to see you again. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make homemade pizza. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of walk you through the steps of how I do it. But before we do that, I have a dad joke for you. So what did the pizza maker say uh, when he saw the eel? That's amore. Ah. So anyway, let's get started. Okay, so here's how I do it. Uh, you know, I, I use, I've made crust uh, from scratch in the past, but I actually buy my crust from Trader Joe's now. They just make it so easy. You know, you can find other types of crusts at the store too that are in, come in a box and then you just roll them out. I found that those aren't as tasty. I really like what Trader Joe's has done. They make the, you know, the price is pretty reasonable. Not getting compensated from them for this, but you know, it's they've made it pretty convenient. So it's kind of hard to, make your own dough because uh, the price is right and it always comes out really good. So what they say to do is you open this and then you take the dough out and just let it set for 30 minutes. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do first. We're just gonna take it out, let it set for 30 minutes. I've also, in a pinch, if I didn't have time, just went ahead and start working it um, and it still came out fine, but I'm just gonna go ahead and follow the instructions this time. <laughs> so, all right, so I'll come back in about 30 minutes. Okay, so while I was waiting for this to rest for 30 minutes, uh, it's been a little, it's pretty close to 30 minutes now, I went ahead and prepared the rest of my ingredients. Um, so I cut up onions, because I like onions on my pizza. Uh, I cut up my olives, and you know, it's pretty straightforward. You can buy canned olives that are already sliced, or you can just uh, buy the whole ones and slice them up yourself. I have whole ones on hand, so that's what I ended up using. I'm gonna put pepperoni. I like pepperoni and black olive is kind of my go-to. You know, another real popular one uh, here in our house is uh, Canadian bacon and pineapple, so ham and pineapple. Uh, so I, I'll probably make another pizza after this, but I'm just gonna walk you through the steps of how to make this, because it's basically the same for any pizza. Um, so the first thing that we need to do now is we're gonna roll this out, and you wanna get it pretty thin. I'm gonna put it on this cast iron uh, pan because I also have a Traeger and I can actually cook this it, you can use a Traeger as a pizza oven um, so I have that outside and we we cook uh, our pizza on this but I'm gonna go ahead and cook this in our oven as well um, just because you may not have a Traeger you probably have an oven though right so so anyway I'm just gonna go ahead and, and work this out and it it'll take me a little while but you basically just kind of and you've seen those people, you know, at the pizza place where they're kind of playing with the, the dough like this, right? There's a reason why it kind of stretches it out. Works really well for that because you'll find as you're trying to, trying to get it to roll out, it wants to shrink back on you. So you have to work it and you want to try to get it into a circle as best as you can, right? So we're going to do that. Probably fight with it for about, about five or ten minutes to get it where you want it, okay? So then you can pick it up and stretch it out, right? Get pretty fancy. You're probably more fancy than I am about it, but anyway, yeah, there's different ways you can do it. I am seeing, so like I told you before, <laughs> I've taken this straight out of the package and just gone ahead and worked it. Uh, but boy, actually letting it sit for a little while, it's making it a lot easier to work it. So all you professionals out there probably already knew that. Uh, but for us beginners, <laughs> that's, uh, I'm learning something new every day, right? So anyway, let me get this where I want it and then, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so another thing I forgot to mention is you can go ahead and turn your oven on um, so it can be warming up while you're doing this because this really won't take all that long. It'll probably take you, I don't know, 10 minutes to get it all kind of where you want it. Won't take time at all to, to get the toppings on there. I have this just about where I want it, okay? I rolled it out, it's pretty thin, but I like it that way. And you can kind of tell by putting your pan on top of it, looks like it's about right, okay? And in the same way when I, when I made my uh, pumpkin pie crust, this is a nice little trick, right? You just, to get, to transfer it, you just roll it on up, okay? And then we can put that over here, and then just roll it back down, okay? Just an easy way to transfer it. And then you kind of get it where you want it. And then you can always, again, I'm not too concerned about how pretty the crust looks. I think that adds to the character. Uh, it shows that it's homemade. And I think that that's kind of, 
kind of cool, right? It showed that you, you actually made it yourself. So I don't, I'm not too particular about how great the, the, the ends look. So next we're going to go ahead and add the sauce. Okay. And this is just canned sauce. You know, you might get a little more fancy than me and try something, try to make your own sauce. Uh, you know, <laughs> more power to you. I think it's just kind of, this makes it really easy. And I think, you know, sauces have come a long way. They've got so many different, uh, flavors now, you know, that you can with mushrooms and all kinds of different things. So you can, you can, uh, kind of choose whatever you want. So, all right. So here's another thing that I like to add is sun-dried tomatoes. You know, I, it's kind of a little bit interesting because when I was a kid, I hated tomatoes. Uh, we used to actually <laughs> feed them to the dog underneath our table. Uh, yeah, because we just didn't like them, but we were forced to, <laughs> forced to eat them. But as I've gotten older, I kind of, you know, uh, I think for like a BLT, I like them for that and I like them on a hamburger. Uh, but I, eating them plain, that's not really for me. But so it's interesting that I'm actually putting sun-dried tomatoes, actually adding that to my pizza now as I've gotten older. But I like these, they got a nice little flavor to them and they're kind of uh, chewy a little bit. I don't know how else to put, how else to say it, but, but I kind of like them. So I just kind of put those around. You can leave those off if, if you want. Just something that I've kind of started adding now that I'm a little bit older. Next thing I do, you want to put a thin layer of cheese, okay? So just a thin layer of cheese first. And I do like cheese, so <laughs> I don't really skimp on my cheese. Okay, so that looks, that looks about right. Okay, and then now I'm adding my pepperoni. And I basically just kind of cover it with pepperoni rather than just kind of throwing it sporadically. I actually kind of, you know, I'm a little bit methodical about putting my pepperoni on because I want everybody to be able to get a piece of pepperoni, right? When they get their pizza, when you cut it up. Okay. And it doesn't take that long to, to do it. And this is pretty fun, you know, if you do this as a family where you, everybody kind of has their own little part and you can include little kids too, right? Kind of, kind of a fun bonding moment to get, get to hang out together. And it doesn't, you know, it's not all that difficult as you can see to do this. Okay. All right. We're real close. There we go. And then I like olives too. So we'll go ahead and put olives on. You don't want to pile it too high because then it doesn't cook on the inside too. Um, so another thing that I do, the recipe on that pack of dough actually calls for 475. I would tone it down from that. Uh, I'll, so I'll, I'll be doing it at about 450 or 425 and just cook it a little bit longer. So that way everything gets cooked because I tend to <laughs> put a little, you know, quite a few extra toppings on. Okay. So that's that. And then I like onions too. Um, so I basically just took a, an onion and I cut it in uh, fourths. Okay. I cut slices and then I cut that in fourths because I think that's a nice size onion. If you go too fine, then, you know, I don't know. I kind of like a little bit of, to be able to kind of taste it. Right. So, okay. So that looks pretty good. And then now I just put my, my final topping of cheese on it. Okay. All right, so it's ready for, for the oven. Okay, so the oven's at 425. It's, it's been preheating, so here we go. You wanna put it on the, this rack here. You don't wanna go too low, cause then it'll just cook the bottom. You don't wanna go too high, cause then it'll just cook the top. This is about good, I think, right here. So I'm gonna put it in. Set the timer for probably 15 minutes and check it. All right, 
right, so as you can see, I cleaned up my mess here too. Uh, you know, so that's always a good idea when the pizza is cooking or you're done with the last pizza, clean up, you know, while you're waiting for the pizza to cook. Cause then when you're done, then everything's clean and you you can go ahead and eat. You don't have to worry about a big mess to clean up at, at the end. So, uh, yeah, so I cooked that at 425 for 18 minutes. The recipe said 475 for eight to 10 minutes. So you just got to kind of keep an eye on it. I kept checking on it uh, and then I ended up pulling it out at about 18. So, um, and I think it, it'll end up being real good. You want to let it sit for about uh, five minutes or so before you start cutting it because that kind of helps everything kind of gel together too. And plus you don't want to burn the roof of your mouth, right? If you dig in a little too early, then you have to live with your mouth being raw for a couple of days. So anyway, I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks for watching and God bless you.